Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to use material list in Navy Snap. We've had many requests for this tutorial, so we're going to go ahead and start. On. The first thing we need to do is to add libraries. On the right hand side there is a library pane, and you can open this library pane by pressing shortcut E, and you can see you can close it, or you can open. So let's go ahead and press shortcut A to open the uh, location of libraries. In this case I set up location on the desktop, and I'm going to open all four libraries. I have a diagram library for digital multitasker, diagram outline library for digital multitasker, standalone products diagram for symbols and pages. Select all four of them by holding the shift key and press open. And you will see that on the right hand side all the libraries were loaded and if you want to know which libraries are loaded just click down arrow and you will see all four libraries here. So to start the project, I'm going to create a couple of more pages. I have page one, so I'm going to add page two, and there's a shortcut N that I can use. In this case, I'm going to add two pages. I'm going to duplicate the format, and I'm going to insert it after page one. The last page I'm going to name template. There's no significance in the, in the name, except that it's easy for me to identify that it's a template. And I'm going to mark it as template by pressing T and then make it invisible. So this way I can see the template but it's not printed. To start the template I'm going to use a library called Pages. And I'm going to select 8.5 by 11 with title blocks and locators. Now if I center my page by pressing F, when I select the correct symbol for the page and double click on it, it will show up exactly in the center of the page. So every time you double click on the symbol in the library, it places it directly on the center of the page. You can drag it into the page, but then you have to locate it in the center. So in this case, double clicking it, and I have it on the, on the center of the page. Let's go to page one and go ahead and set up the template for page one and for page two. Now we have designed the templates and we have it uh, applied to every page. Now we can start our design. Now in our design I'm going to select some amplifiers and I'm going to select some input and outputs uh, and put them on two different pages. So in this case I'll take um, the um, HDMI distribution amplifier, uh, 12 slot multitasker, and maybe I'll take uh, 4x2 switcher, something like this. Then I'm going to switch the library and uh, I'm going to go to standalone product and on the second page I'm going to put some HD based T transmitters and HD based T receivers. Now I can also add a uh, graphical representation of the inputs and outputs. I'm going to navigate to 3D products library and I'm also going to add one more library and that would be the 3D AV part. I'm going to bring in uh, display and also laptop. Laptop and maybe document camera in here. And maybe I'm going to duplicate laptop so I have two one with HDMI, one with, with display port output. And uh, maybe in, in, in addition to the monitor, I may want to bring in a projector. So there's my projector here, and if you're controlling something, you can also put a screen here, and there's your screen. And you see right now the screen pointing outwards, so go ahead and flip it using the mirror function. So that's pretty much basic uh, design of the system. We haven't done any connections yet, but what I did, I went ahead and already designed it, and I put it on a desktop. So we're going to open this project. Pretty much has the same information on it, but it's going to help us to get started. So file open and the file that I have is a sample project. I'm not going to save this. And here is my project. So I have page one. I have my inputs. I have my uh, HDMI display port switcher. I have separate HDMI input for the overhead camera. I have three outputs and notice that they marked output one, output two, and output three. Then I go to page two. It connects to page two, output one, output two, output three into the HD based T transmitters through CAT5 cable, HD based T receivers, two projectors, and one 
monitor. So here is my basic system, and uh, I should be in good shape to start using uh, bill of materials. Now the thing that you may want to do before you do bill of materials or list of materials is to import a price list. And if you go to File, Import Price List, it tells you that the price list can consist of all these fields separated by tab. You have model number, retail price, designated description, manufacturer name, manufacturer phone, manufacturer web page, and symbol page. Now in my case, I have a file that I created that has a model number and the retail price, and that's it. So I'm going to go say, OK, go ahead, and I'm going to select this file that I already created, and I'm going to try to import it. I'm going to open it. And here I have three choices. I can update libraries only, I can update current project only, or I can update both. I, I decided I'm going to update both. So it's importing, saving, and now we have it imported into the AV Snap drawing and also in all the libraries. If you double click on any symbol, you can see there's a price here. If you double click on another symbol, there's also a price here. So that's how it, you know that's important. If we look at the actual file, it's pretty straightforward. You have a model number, and you have and you have a price. You have model number and the price separated by a tab, and then we can import it into the AV Snap. Now that the prices are imported and the templates are set for the page, so we can design the project, uh, then we can go ahead and generate a list of materials by pressing M for materials list we're displaying a form that shows us what material list looks like. We have one piece of MT302121, 304203, 305-804. Here are the prices, and we have some description here, total price, and you notice that this is for page one. But we may have more than page one. We may have page two, three, and four. So you may want to select all pages if you want the complete project. Notice that I'm only displaying Altinex parts here, but the other ones which are laptops and uh, overhead projectors and um, overhead cameras and projectors and displays. Not, nothing is shown here. But if you look only at Altinex products, it's $4,540. So you, there's a couple of things you can do. Of course, you can copy this and paste it to any word processor or any system that you want. That, that's the simplest way. The other way, you can send it to text box. So if I send it to text box, the text box is generated in the bottom right corner, and you can see I can move it to the right. Let me increase the size of the text here. And here is your list right here. So if you want to do a quick design and put bill of materials right on the page, and what it costs for each page, you can do that. Or you can do for all pages, and you will see that. So let's uh, take a look and see uh, why some of the symbols here showing up in the material list and some do not. There's a couple of uh, buttons that control whether this is going to show up in material list or not. One is called Do Not Show in List of Materials. If you check off this uh, option box, you'll see that it's not going to display this item in the Bill of Materials. And a lot of times that's done if you have extraneous parts or you don't need to include them in, in the cost, so then you would check this off. However, when you do this, a little red dot shows up. So if I do this right here on the left hand side, there's a little red dot shows up. And that's to warn you that this particular part is not included in list of material. But that's your visual clue that this part is not included. Like here on the laptop, you can see that it's not included in the list of materials. Now although it's nice to see, it's sometimes visually unappealing to see that little red dot with a cross on it. So to get rid of it, you can go back to the symbol and select Block from List of Materials. When you do this, the item will not be shown in the Bill of Materials, but it's also not going to identify that this item is not included in the Bill of Materials. So it's up to you, and it's just how comfortable it feels for you to know which parts are included or not. I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to go to these, these parts and figure out what to do with the laptops and, and overhead camera. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck all of this and say I'm going to include it in, in the list of materials. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one and I'm going to go ahead and do it on for this one. So when I do this and I press shortcut M, you will see now 
that the list is separated by manufacturer name. So we have Altinex Inc. on the top, we have Dell Computer in the middle, and we have Wolf Vision. And it shows me total price, including the prices on the Wolf Vision and uh, Dell laptops. Now notice that I don't have price for Dell 1000, so it shows zero here. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here, double click, and I'm going to insert the price, $456. And when I press shortcut M, it will now show up here. You can click to text box and bring it right here. Increase the size a little bit. It defaults to size 8. And you have a quick list of materials that you can look at and see what the costs are involved. But there's more you can do with this. Let's go ahead and try to export this to Excel. So pressing material list, I'm going to select export to Excel. So let's go ahead and select all pages. So this is all my complete project. Export to Excel. I'm going to go to desktop and say that this is my materials and save it. By default, it will automatically open in Excel sheet. Once it's in Excel sheet, you have manufacturer name. You have also model. If there's a SKU number, you have a SKU number, description. You have quality here. And of course you have pricing. So now you have the complete project and everything is organized in each cell. But sometimes I want to change this and do it a little bit different. What I want to do is each manufacturer to be on a different page in Excel sheet. Because if I'm going to be placing purchase orders, I just want to be able to go to different pages and, and select a different manufacturer. So let's go ahead and export it in such a way that it separates into pages. So going back to our project, I'm going to press M for materials list. I'm going to select all and I'm going to check mark export each page separately. Selecting this, export to Excel, save it. And now you can see I have two pages. One has two parts, Altinex parts, and the first has three parts plus Dell plus Wolf Vision. Once this is done, you can operate Excel sheet and sort it as needed. Sometimes what I want to do is also save the library for the project because later on maybe I don't have access to the library or I don't know exactly uh, where the original library was. So what I can do, I can um, right click on the library pane and say create library from project. That allows me to put it on the desktop and say my project, project uh, library project library. Once I save it, I provide library name and you will see that this library now is here and all of the items I have in the project will show up in one place. The other thing that I like to do when I finish the project, I like to create um, a pack and go file. A pack and go file is the uh, zip file that has everything you need to do to open this project on any other computers if you have any snap. So double clicking pack and go, desktop, and I'm going to say sample project zip and save it to desktop. Now what's nice about this is once you go to the sample project zip you will see that you have your sample project but you also have fonts available. So if you have a project keeping the fonts together will allow you to recreate project easily on any other computer. Thank you for listening.